to spend that. We are talking about uh, the challenges. It is the launch of the first phase of the 5,000 affordable housing program for Homer Bay County. The project is expected to not only alleviate the housing deficit uh, in the county, and by housing here we're talking about decent and affordable housing, but also significantly boost the local uh, economy. The project will ultimately cover several towns in the county, including Oyugis, Kendu Bay, uh, and Bita. As the President has said uh, before, because he has launched other projects or such projects before, the affordable housing program, which is a key plank of the government's agenda, and of course one of the killers of the Kenya Kwanza Manifesto, is not only about low-cost and decent housing needs, but also meant to create jobs uh, for thousands of youth and stimulate the economy. So for this project, or in this program, just as the others he has launched, and of course he has said this before, housing parts such as doors, windows, gates, hinges, and all other fittings will be supplied uh, by the local Joakali associations. This will boost the local economy, put money in the pockets of hustlers in Homer Bay County, and uh, of course for the Joakali enterprises with such programs, they will expand create jobs and create wealth, uh, and especially nationally for the three million people in the subsector. It is also here, important here to mention uh, the role of counties in the housing uh, agenda. Homabe was the first devolved county government to sign the Affordable Housing Memorandum of Understanding in April 2018. The county has set aside 11.6 acres for the affordable housing project. Uh, this support, of course, is critical to achieving uh, the president's agenda and the government's agenda. Already, uh, 39 counties have identified land on which affordable houses will be built. All this, as I said, is in line with the president's commitment uh, to bridge the housing deficit, uh, which currently stands at 2 million units. The target is to do 200,000 units every year. Uh, Four months since the president assumed office, the housing agenda has had the following results. Cumulatively, the program has a robust and active pipeline of 376 projects set to deliver 599,000 uh, housing units across the country. Uh, the projects that have been commissioned or launched by the president so far uh, total to 22,490 units, and I'll share this uh, data with you after this. Uh, this includes 13,076 units he launched in Mukuru, uh, uh, Nairobi, 4,000 Kibira Soweto B, also in Nairobi, and Mavoko Affordable Housing Project of 5,360 units. That's in Machakos County. We also have another 9,935 units that are currently ongoing. Uh, this includes 1,500 in Pangani, Nairobi, 605 Bondeni, uh, Mombasa, another 1,850 in Buxton, Mombasa, and 1,800 uh, in Nairobi, Bachelors Divanji Estate, and Moke Gardens in Machakos, 4,118 units. And the ones that are ready for launch, including the Homer Bay one that he'll be uh, launching tomorrow, in total we have 37,708 that are ready for launch. This includes uh, Makongeni Affordable Housing Project that he will launch soon in Nairobi, 30,000 units, 2,420 units Starehe uh, in Nairobi, 1,728 units Shaurimoyo, uh, Shaurimoyo A in Nairobi, uh, Ruiru Affordable Housing Projects of 1,200 units in Kiambu County, also in Kiambu County, Thika Affordable Housing Project of 360 units, and of course now the Homabe one starting with uh, 2,000 for phase one. Finally, the President will also be uh, launching and inspecting other projects in his two-day working tour, including commissioning the newly completed Oyugis Market and the background for the Homer Bay Fish Market. The two projects are crucial to the economic uh, transformation of this county, of Homer Bay County, and will provide space for trade in agricultural products and boost the region's economy. There is more, of course, on the President's two-day visit uh, of the region, and you'll be here, uh, God willing, to cover that, uh, including interventions in agriculture and infrastructure, and he will also preside over the commissioning of the Jaramogi Oginga Odinga University of Science and Technology Blue Economy uh, Research Hub that will be in CIA. Thank you very much. I'll take a few questions. 
morning. My name is Laura Oteno from Citizen TV. You mentioned that uh, the government is looking to do 200,000 units per year. This sounds a little overambitious. What plan do you have in terms of budgetary allocation to ensure that this number is attained? Thank you, uh, Laura. Uh, first, for the majority of this uh, project, the government is working through the public uh, PPP, public-private partnership. The State Department of Housing has already reported, and the President has addressed this matter before, uh, that there is immense uh, 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 the private, private sector is really interested in this project already. So the housing department is already reporting that there is immense um, interest or significant interest of the pri private sector. And other uh, sources like pension funds. You remember a few months back, uh, the pension funds, uh, they met with the president in Nairobi, the association, and they announced 500 billion uh, to go to this uh, program. So in terms of financial needs, it's looking okay, Laura. Mm -hmm. And of course, uh, if we are to subject the 200,000 units we're talking about, if we are to subject, just for the sake of your question, we're not subjecting it, but just, just for the sake of your question, if we are to subject it to quarterly, because you are now four months since uh, the President's assumed office, subject it to quarterly targets, we're talking about a total of 70,000 units already now, ready for launch, some uh, ready for launch, some already commissioned, and some ongoing. So we already passed the quarterly targets, so we are doing okay. Yeah? Any other question? Good morning, and uh, my, my name is Wickley Fokech. It is uh, the first time the president is visiting this region on official tour after being elected president. Second time. Official tour? Okay, fine. And uh, there, have been proposed, there has been a proposal to have the office of uh, the leader of opposition anchored in law. And uh, some people, there are some quarters of the political class who believe that this is an opportunity that uh, is being proposed to also anchor the office of the Prime Minister in law. Is it, uh, could you make it clear uh, the intention of creating that office? Because people believe that it probably it is a sweetening deal to bring the opposition leader, uh, that is Ray Dinga, on board. Could you make it that clear? <laughs> Uh, I think the President spoke about this as, as uh, late, as, uh, as recent as uh, a week ago, if I'm not wrong, and he's been very clear. His are suggestions, the proposals he made, and of course they stem to some of the solutions he's proposing. For example, what he found on the table when he came in as President, the two-thirds gender principle, and what we need to do. He made proposals just like any other citizen can make proposals to Parliament, and he used the right channels, which is Parliament. And he has also been clear. He, he, he didn't talk about the leader of opposition. He talked about the position of the leader of opposition. Okay, so it doesn't mean any one person. That is not a position for any one individual. So it's not about him or any other individual. It is about building an institution that will outlive us. Yeah? My name is Chris Mahandara. I work with Kenya News Agency. We have a number of projects that were launched by the past regime. Among them, the port of Kisumu. We have shipbuilding at uh, the shipyard and uh, the special economic zone. So my question is, what is the fate of these ongoing projects? Uh, as I said, there are other infrastructural projects uh, that the president will be launching tomorrow and inspecting tomorrow, including he will also be visiting the, the port and will be making announcements there. So I urge you to uh, wait for him tomorrow. I don't want to preempt everything. I will get more information tomorrow. Okay, morning. I'm Faith Matete from the Star newspaper. Uh, recently, the Azimio leader, Ray Lodinga, talked about, uh, he, he said that if the president seeks constitutional reforms, then he, he should bring BBI on the table. Is this something the president is considered? Um, I think I, I've just, I was responding to your uh, colleague, and I, I responded to that question uh, in one way or another. Uh, again, the president has been clear it is not about him or any one individual in the proposals he has made uh, to, uh, for constitutional change. Okay? And he has done this as a citizen. He has done this through the right channels, which is parliament. It is not about him or the Honorable Raila Odinga or you or me uh, to sit and agree about what uh, amendments need to be done to the constitution. Every Kenyan has a right, use the right channels, and uh, Every Kenyan is entitled to suggest their solutions. As I said, this stemmed from, he has proposed, he proposed a few 
amendments. One, implementation of the two uh, thousand gender rule and what, how should it should, we should go about it. And he made that communication to Parliament. Two, on the constituency development, uh, Senate oversight and national government affirmative action funds. Three, the position of the leader of official opposition. The position, I insist. And parliamentary oversight of the executive. He, made his, he gave his reasons as to why. And every other Kenyan, of course, uh, can make their suggestions, uh, whether they want to change the constitution or whatever they want to do with the amendments uh, to the constitution. Okay? I think that's it. We'll take the final one. Okay. Okay. My, uh, my name is Baraka. I work for A24 TV. Yes, Baraka. Uh, for the past four months, uh, ever since uh, the president was uh, sworn in, uh, we've seen uh, high-profile cases uh, being uh, uh, dismissed in the court of law. Key among them, uh, the case associated with the, the deputy president, uh, Rigathi Gashagwa, and also the CS uh, for gender, Aisha Juma. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe your take on that. Because it's a ma matter of uh, national concern. Uh, many people are saying that, uh, of course, because it's uh, allied, cases allied to uh, cases uh, that uh, are involving his key allies. Mm -hmm. That's why they're being uh, thrown away in court. Well, um, again, I think the president has pronounced himself, uh, himself for this, but first, Whatever cases that are happening in any institution, in the courts, uh, handled by the, the Office of the Director of uh, Public Prosecution or any other institution in government, are happening at that institution. The DPP or, or the Office of the DPP is an independent institution. Uh, the President has been clear about respecting institutions and he has actually demonstrated it. There are promises he made, he actually did uh, and he, he fulfilled including uh, appointment of the, of the judges on the first day uh, of office, of assuming office. The president also promised that he will delink uh, funding uh, of the police service from the office of the president to be done through the, the, uh, an accounting officer uh, in the inspector general's office. He did that as well. So he respects the institutions uh, uh, in the country. Whatever case is happening in any institution or at any level, I think I can only suggest to you maybe you go to that institution and find out why a case is proceeding or why a case is not proceeding and there are merits or demerits to that case. It has nothing to do with the presidency. Okay? Thank you very much. I'm hoping to see you tomorrow. Thank you.